Well, yes, there are halls and halls, you know, there are music halls where you go and you just play, you know, just another concert, and there are special halls, and the halls which are, you know, like kind of cathedrals of music world, like, for example, I will give you one, it's Music Verein in Vienna, you know, when you go on stage and you know how many people were sitting in the same, you know, worn out spot in front of piano, and you don't know, actually, you know, whether you can just play or you should, you know, get on your knees, genuflect and kiss that spot. And I think tonight also, you know, in the Zalo Philharmonie, it's one of those occasions, because when you think about history, you know, it puts such an incredible burden on your shoulders, in a way, you know, responsibility, thinking of all those people, you know, who went in front of audience, you know, the same audience, which changes through ages, you know, but it's the same, you know, kind of t music civilization we live in, and it's incredible. I think, you know, until tonight, probably the most important hall was for me, Music Verein. Then, of course, there was a big place which I just played, it was Royal Albert Hall. It's not typically classical venue, it's more, you know, Adele performer there. So it was both recital and music event, in a way, you know, get together for fans from around the world. But I think, you know, Vienna holds a special spot in my heart for me. That's an interesting question, but actually I don't choose pieces or periods, you know, just based on chronological order or something. I always look in music for emotions. Music for me, you know, it's not about pyrotechnics or technique, you know. There are some people who get excited about technical part of Chopin etudes. For me it was about music. And music, you know, emotional, how do I connect with audience, how do I speak to their souls rather to their, you know, visuals, you know, not to impress people with the fastest playing, loudest playing. This is just physiological part, you know, it's just like we live, we breathe in, we breathe out, we perspire, we walk. But music is something, you know, that comes from our soul. And Chopin music, because it's so personal, you know, he probably was one of the most composers who spoke the most frankly to us, you know, about himself, and he passed all the, you know, things surrounding him, you know, his life, his view of the world. He was passing through prism, you know, lens of his, you know, inner camera, and letting us see the photograph of it, the movie, which is quite incredible. So it's always very personal, very inner, you know, I wouldn't say introvert, but rather you know, looking inside of your soul playing in Chopin, that's why he holds special place for me. But, you know, I cannot name just one composer or three, you know, it's Chopin, Rachmaninoff, Beethoven, Mozart, Schubert, and so on. I only play music I love. <laughs> Well, let me take a wild guess, because the festival, you know, it's so great, you know, when I arrived, it was my first time in Poland, you know, you the door of airplane opens, first of all, you are in Chopin airport, which is very special to start with, but then you see those huge posters, and the festival, you know, the name of festival, of course, it's Chopin and his Europe. So there is great connection, you know, in music, what was happening before Chopin, which Chopin absorbed a lot in his, you know, in his style, in his music, but what was happening after Chopin, you know, in the world, Chopin made such a great impression, you know, he put his stamp on music, which was happening, you know, hundred and hundred years after him, and, you know, Ravel being French, even, you know, though he was creating his own style, but both in pianistically and musically, you know, there was no escape from Chopin, you know. Chopin was a watershed in history of music, of piano music, you know, because we pianists were so unfortunate in a way because we deal, you know, with instrument which is made out of wood and metal and it has hammers, you know. It's very difficult to deal with a set of 88 hammers. And to create, you know, to be able to sing an instrument and to speak an instrument, it was up to Chopin to make us believe that, yes, it's possible. And to make, you know, the piano into instrument of great poetry, into instrument of, you know, great openness of, you know, of singing, of talking, you know, being very intimate with people. It was up to Chopin and the history of music after Chopin. You know, all the European music, so we're talking about Chopin and his Europe. It changed forever, you know. I don't know where it would go without Chopin, you know, what piano would be. Maybe it would still be, you know, this percussive orchestra instrument in a way. So we're incredibly lucky. And to have, you know, the, Ravel, 
who absorb it, you know, voluntarily or not, you know, this kind of approach to piano, approach to music. It's great, you know, just juxtaposition to have in single concert, you know, Chopin and what happened after. So it's really great and very interesting for audience, I'm sure.